Everyone, remember when we were at the Pearl Laguna and I was with Simone and Margie and they were telling us all about this amazing smart DNA wellness test that they've got for genomes. Why would we get one of those done? Because everyone's going to want to know what this is. Okay, so it's a preventative health test and it's for people that are unwell and have got some sort of health issue that they're struggling with that they can't actually seem to resolve. That's a great way of um, being able to look at that. And then it's for people who just want to take a preventative health approach. So to... you can be totally healthy as well and yeah, find absolutely. out different stuff about absolutely. yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Preventative so... what? Um, inflammation, preventative... Cardiovascular uh, health. Cardiovascular so health, a big one. stress markers, even um, exercise. So you know, we all go to the gym and we exercise. We want to be um, healthy and fit and we don't want to injure ourselves. So by following this protocol, then you'll know, are you more sprint based or endurance based or do you fall somewhere Or can you between? sit on the couch and do that? That's right, exactly. <laughs> so, so that's why someone would get one of these tests because you're going to feel better and live a better life. Optimal, Is that a fair comment? Yeah, optimal life. Absolutely. So we look at a hundred DNA changes and everything we look at, you can do something about um, through food, uh, nutrition, uh, all supplementation life. or lifestyle interventions. Exactly. So you, right now we're going to sit down and they're going to tell us all, if the whole family has done this test. It's yeah. a saliva test. We've also done a fecal test for something else, but that's coming the next episode, everyone. That's right. So the saliva <laughs> test is today. And so we're going to sign off now and we're going to come back and tell you all about it. Hopefully with happiness. <laughs> okay, so I've had my, my little... Megan, how did you go? How oh did God, you go? So many things that I'd sort of suspected, but now they're confirmed. I, I was really interested because in the last, I don't know, probably the last 18 months, because I didn't drink coffee till I was 30. And I feel like when I drink coffee, whether it's black or with milk, that I put weight on. And okay. Then, and you said, what was it, that I had a, a slow caffeine metabolism? Yeah, so you're really, really slow at metabolizing caffeine. And also, if we're a little bit stressed, it can uh, actually hijack us and make us produce more cortisol. And then that can lead to weight gain. So, so the solution for Megan is decaf, decaf coffee. or no coffee. Decaf coffee. So decaf coffee has about 3% caffeine, but full strength caffeine has about 70%. So we mix, so I find that fascinating, everybody, because, because I've been suspecting it and, for so long. And she was drinking coffee also with soy milk. And Megan had a theory on that. And so what have you now found out with your well, gene, I, deep, my your gene, gene disposition? Like soy, does it? No, Megan's genes do not like soy or anything that mimics an estrogen. They're called xenoestrogens. They're found in the environment. So, Megan, you're going to Because that can lead... That, what, what happens if I have that? Well, the, the problem with... Um, all these exposure to estrogens is that can also lead to uh, to weight gain and you don't want to have <laughs> extra estrogen circulating because you have to think about other yeah. cancers that may become estrogen driven or estrogen yeah. dependent so we want to dial I'm down so glad to that. know all this everybody and but the there was some good things no, no, and the other, all right but i think these are fascinating like the things that i suspected and vitamin b i need to have more of vitamin c vitamin b12 is a really big thing for you yeah the absorption of it and utilization of it keeping homocysteine levels low it's really important Vitamin C, got yep. to meet your daily recommended intake, yeah. at least at for least. vitamin C. Yep. And vitamin D. Yeah, so that explains your pathology results. So interesting. Every step of your pathway is affected for vitamin D processing. And what so, was that thing about the dopamine? Tell them about that, because I thought that was especially interesting, about how my brain is one of those brains that goes, oh, I, I want a glass more. of wine, and then you go, I might have another no, glass no, of wine, because I don't feel It's about your brain wants to feel good all the time. Yeah. yeah. So brains do want to feel good all the time, yeah. and your brain is wired to require more dopamine, because you have lower levels of dopamine, so one of the best yeah. ways to flush out a bit of dopamine is a everyone. glass of wine. Oh, I thought you were going to say exercise. I was going to say because that apparently helps. Oh, too, exercise. So if you want to, if you want to go really healthy, exercise a great way to flush dopamine and um, those lovely natural endorphins. Yeah. Is there anything other than like apart from exercise and food? Is there anything external like conversation with a friend or something that? raises your dopamine level as well. well. Maybe if you find that person particularly stimulating and yeah. exciting, yeah, for that sure. That would be me, Megan. <laughs> so if I, if I was, you know, like, this is interesting, like, you know, maybe so that's getting my dopamine level. Yeah. yeah.
<laughs> but what <laughs> else? What else did you find out about yourself, mate? Oh. What did your genes tell you? Oh, it said I had, had a celiac marker, and I am celiac, so that was you know. So that's that's a firm, right. Yeah, that's we already knew. And that, and what sort of an athlete are you, Megs? I'm an endurance athlete, everybody, <laughs> which means I have to exercise for long periods of time, and why I like the Pearl Laguna and doing those long hikes. That makes perfect sense. I mean, you should have seen you powering up those yeah. hills ahead of everybody else, always winning. Yeah. Um, I don't driven. love it, but I can do it is probably, you and, know. I and the it. effect of exercise on your brain in relation to diet? Oh, that's a really fascinating piece. So Megan has got one copy of the fatso gene. And the <laughs> problem with the fatso gene is that uh, it makes us feel that's hungry the all the time. Name for it, yeah. And the only way, the only way to not feel hungry for okay, Megan... There's, there's to exercise every day. <laughs> <laughs> there's a number of other things. So, so protein with every meal... Fiber, but exercise, I'm exercise down. dials down that problem that they have with satiety or not feeling full. Yeah, so protein every meal. Protein, Should I have fiber. a meal three times a day, or is that just like? Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. Should I? If you were pre-diabetic, though, you know, lots and lots of little meals is probably yeah. not going to be recommended. Yeah. So. Oh, and the oxidative, what, oh, the oxidative stress. stress thing was interesting too. That's that's called. Well, she described that as cellular rusting, which just means basically getting older. Yeah. So basically, Megan has three markers there for cellular rusting. So antioxidant intake is important. Selenium yeah. intake is important. So they're really a big focus. So what's good about all of this, everyone, is that this doesn't mean that I have all these problems right now, but it means that this is what it can lead to, and I can uh, be proactive and, and make a choice. And actually, it makes me far more inclined to exercise back on the treadmill and to do that stuff that you say is good for my body, because now it makes sense to do it for a purpose. I knew it all along. It's like the whistle. Well, see, yeah. th that's <laughs> right. Well, because the interesting thing is you yeah. exercise, you don't have coffee, you don't have soy products. Yeah. And this is going to get the weight off from around your guts. Life, which makes sense because I didn't have soy for a long time and I didn't have um, coffee, coffee till I was 30. So it's kind of interesting. Mm. Yeah, and, and a lot of these parts are all connected. So if you're going to be doing a lot of exercise, you're an endurance athlete, you want to make sure you've got really good <laughs> antioxidant support. Yeah. And certainly after you've exercised, all those free radicals that are produced, that's a really important piece. Yeah. The other is your inflammation markers. We want to dial down inflammation. Yes. You don't want to wear out your knee joints and so on. Correct. Because you've over -exercised. And so that's so. the cellular rusting and that's the Brazil nuts, sunflower seeds, mushrooms. And your omega-3 intake is really important. So, Margie, what's the name of your firm? Smart DNA. Smart DNA. And so... You will now give Megan a hundred page report on herself. That'll be fascinating Great. reading it. And, and so yeah. Megan will be able to drill down and she'll yeah. be able to change her lifestyle to have herself optimum health. Yeah, and the best part about Smart DNA is that we always work with practitioners. So Megan will have the benefit of getting expert advice from a practitioner. So this is not normal today. Report. Having you here is not the norm. This is a so special treat, so this is a special treat. This Normally special you treat. would you would send people to Correct, 100%. Someone who explains it like you but not you because Oh, you... it was probably someone who is heaps better a lot more of the interventions and um, yeah, really knows that. I mean, I've designed the test, but there's a lot to know yeah. and these practitioners are experts and in knowing perhaps the dopamine boosters and they'll give you a list yeah. of dopamine yeah. boosters. So you're a you've got a PhD in molecular genetics so I'm a DNA okay scientist. you're a dna so scientist so so yeah. um every one of my friends that i've spoken to about this wants to get the test and so know, how so do you... how do they go about getting the test and what is it that they ask for if they want to do the test the test is called a genomic wellness test they can contact smart dna at www.smartdna.com.au and we will connect them with a practitioner and they can go ahead and yeah. order the test. And, and a couple of people have asked me the price. Um, is that on the website, is or is that is that <laughs> is that is that or is that that's something that gets discussed at the time? So I know all about this. <laughs> I do this part of the Yeah, work. I don't know about this part. Yeah. Know. So basically, the genomic wellness test is three ninety six, and then you've got the practitioner consult on top of that. Do you know what though? It's a huge investment in your health. So it basically, what, so basically, what happens is the um, practitioner will get a clinical to begin with, and then you'll do the DNA test. They'll send you a way to get some pathology that relates to the DNA test. And then they need time to look at your pathology and to look at the, the 100 page gene report that's given to them. And then they'll form a treatment plan based on those results. So, Megs, today, 
No, no real shocks. No real shocks for you. No, a lot no, of things really confirming. The confirmation of what I thought, because I think we do know our bodies better than yes. we think we do. And mm -hmm. I can't even tell you how many times I've been saying it to the point where I've been waking up in the middle of the night going, I shouldn't have coffee. And so this week I haven't had it for the last three days. And I had decaf this morning. And I just I said to Paul, I just want to test it out. And now and I'm really, I, I just think that's mm -hmm. great that we do know our bodies a bit. So mm. do you feel like a glass of wine? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that was that, that, no, that, that, that was really. Yeah. Is there is there anything else that I think uh, I think as well as those B vitamins, glutathione supports really important for you. What as does well. that mean? So that's a, a, a master antioxidant, and because you've got those three oxidative stress oh, yeah. markers, your glutathione enzymes are a little bit slow to react and produce enzymes. That's another really is that what that is that it, what, what's that this what's this nice Margie? That flying across what, is, that is that that yes yes so this show is me what that is you were talking about of, this as a pill and I never pieces. got some of this show it's me what is it vitamin C show it's me got what your is vitamin C in here has it what's yes. it called Cell and just swivel it around just a little bit cell gibbet okay so we've got selenium in here remember we talked yeah, about yeah. that with your oxidative stress markers does that have enough of those things for me for one is it absolutely daily? absolutely yes it is daily it's got ribose which is a very special form of cysteine yeah. it gets in at a cellular level and it's got a number of other little component pieces as well like broccoli seed extract so oh. the sulfurethanes that we talked about from your broccoli. So this is going to be good for me. All it's organic? All organic. Yes, 100%. Oh, that other thing about not being able to wear perfume was weird too. <laughs> okay, so that's those CYP enzymes. Yeah, so perfume is a xenoestrogen. It Can I wear it sometimes? Sometimes well, it's okay. Sometimes it's okay. All the time. Yeah. <laughs> Can so, I spray so, out my clothes? So, so, so Margie, really? what you're saying is you get in the shower and you do a pump action of palm olive, uh, <laughs> something or other, you know, soap, and then you, you no, wash I your use hair, that other stuff. and then. What do I have a look at? No, but. stuff we use? It. You want to try and get that soap? Products. What's that okay. soap that we use? What's it called? I'll think of it when the tape finishes. Yeah. I, I, I don't I've use got a fog in my brain. Gel. I actually use the one that they have at the Pearl Lagoon. You know that stuff they Castile. Have the Castile. Castile. Yeah. Castile. Like that. Organic. Everything organic. Yeah, just go organic. And your cleaners. I might still wear a tiny splash of Chloe perfume every now and then. <laughs> yeah. Special occasions. Yes, well, <laughs> every time Oprah gives but you a hug, what does she say? Day. She says, you she smell does. like she you. She says, you smell like you. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. That's cute. So just remember, um, we're also going to look at how you are routing your estrogens in your body as well. That's another, another mm. test that we can actually do. That's right. So that'll be something I have to come back with. But I'm also and, and so... In what period of time should Megan sort of get checked again? In six months? In twelve months? Not um, this test. This is a one-off one one like test. A, so like just the blood test. Just the blood like test. This is like my Bible. Yeah. 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 Keep referring back but to the biochemistry test, the pathology, they will indicate how your uh, markers are actually functioning, how your enzymes are actually working. So the fecal test or poo test. This is the this is the one the coming up. Okay. This is the what? Yes, Mark. What does that tell? Them? What's that one tell them that, that just quickly in like two sentences so that they know what's coming? Next? Okay, it's going to tell us how good your microbiome is. So all the bacteria in your gut. Are they in the right balance or are they out of balance? And we call that dysbiosis. So we can start working towards getting your microbiome put perfect. back into the perfect shape for you. Because so I think I think what you said to us at Pearl, you said you're not what you eat, you are what you absorb. Correct. Yes. And the microbiome has an effect of what your gut absorbs. 100%. So if you have more vermicutes, then they call fatty vermicutes, so you absorb more fat. I better not have those. <laughs> but you can shift it, you can make it all move can into we? a more positive shape. For and you. will you be able to see from that test, like the result of the coffee or now the decaf? Oh no, because I was drinking coffee when just I remember, did that. Just remember when you go decaf, you're still getting a great big head of antioxidants. So it doesn't matter whether it's you know, full strength coffee or decaf, yeah. they oh, still cool. contain the same amount of antioxidants. Well, See, well, that's good. That's I perfect. love that bit of knowledge because I'm thinking, why do I even need coffee? So it is good for you. Yeah. Coffee is great for you. It's just if you're a I'll slow metabolizer, okay. good. cut back or cut it out. So there you go, everyone. We're doing a family one of these. We're not going to put you through everyone, but I thought <laughs> it was interesting for you to experience exactly like the, like all the things I've learned. It's Fascinating. With Thank Dr. You so Margie herself. With Dr. The Margie woman herself. who invented the test. I know. It's fascinating. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. It's amazing. So I'm with Margie and we've just done the genome test, haven't we, Margie? We have. Give me all the, all the good news and all the bad news. Hit it, hit it with me, baby. How did I go? 
Pretty good, pretty good. You should thank your mum and dad for a few things there. Well, there's dad there. Okay. There's dad over there. Yeah. 92. Give him a wave, please. Oh. Give him a wave. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got some longevity genes there for sure. So with um, your heart health, okay, yeah. so straightforward Mediterranean style diets, good for you. Yeah. Um, your triglycerides, omega 3s, really, really important. Fish. Fish, that's, that's fantastic. Yeah. Um, and the other good piece of news is your inflammation profile. Fantastic. So you don't have those inflammatory markers there. And you can have coffee. Coffee. Yes, well, I am a lover of coffee. <laughs> okay, so and you're, you're the fast. one who's been doing decaf and not me, and now. <laughs> <laughs> so who knew? Yeah. yeah so fast Far out. metabolizers. So that, that's fantastic. That's a fantastic piece. Uh, B vitamins. B vitamins are really, really important. Big for you, based on genetics and B2 in particular. So without your genotype, B2 is not so important, but because you do have that particular genotype, B2 is critical. If, if I don't take the B, if I don't have the B2 and the B6 and the B12, what happens to me? Well, you run the risk of having lower levels of um, circulating Bs in your in your plasma, and also you run the risk of having elevated levels of homocysteine, which so is it has an a on cardiovascular heart. Risk. problem. Exactly. So you're talking exactly. about that these are the guys that you know go jogging every day and drop dead, and they can't explain it. Uh, yes, in part. In, in part. part, right? In part. I'm on that. Vitamin Welcome. C. Who knew? Vitamin C is so important uh, for you. You need to at least meet your daily recommended intake for vitamin C. Yep. Vitamin D. Uh, well, sun, yeah, increased, increased risk because your conversion when sunlight hits your skin, it's markedly reduced. Fascinating, so, isn't it? So I'm, even though yeah. the government health thing says that's what we should do, it's it's all very personal. It yeah. is personal, based on based on your genome type. Yeah, and how, how you deal with it. it. Yeah. yeah, and your pathways. Vitamin E. So unlike other members of the family, sorry about that, but you need to. Um, I was such on. a star with vitamin E too. <laughs> <laughs> vitamin e. Um, and oxidative stress markers, glutathione support, that's another key piece to your profile. So those rusty genes. So when you're like exercising, me. antioxidant support's really important. And the good mm. news is you're not celiac, you had zero chance. Yes, I didn't have that market. Yeah, right. <laughs> and overall, just a more a methylated folate rather than regular folate. Your enzyme's a bit slow to, to function, so... So what, what, was, what, was, what, was, what about that fat one? Oh, you, said I... oh, you don't have the fat so gene. Lucky you. But so you do annoying. have a gene called a thrifty gene that means when you <laughs> thrifty put, gene. put, put so weight if I, on. So if I was out in the in the forest, I could um, store the fat and live for three days in case I didn't kill anything and eat it. A hundred percent. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So and it's an advantageous uh, survival genetic piece for survival, but test? we're still waiting for a famine, right? <laughs> yeah. Should we put and that theory to test? Put him in the forest. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I also uh, salt. You said uh, sodium. Yeah. Hypertension risk, so you want to use a more natural salt. Himalayan salt? Or yeah, a salt low in sodium, more magnesium and fluoride ions for sure. Hmm, that's fascinating, isn't it? So there so, you go everyone, you've uh, now heard our family genomic history. Yes, <laughs> but I can't wait for the bio gut. Me, me too, exactly. me that too. One is going to be so that's awesome. Max and Zoe had have had their profile. Well, Zoe hasn't yet because we're just about to have dinner, but Max had his done. It was interesting because he had stuff from both of us. Like yeah. everyone else gets their kicks watching YouTube and Netflix, and we're getting our kicks doing genome yeah. tests and gut bio. Well, so I mean, that's the last place you uh, get to blame your parents, right, Max? <laughs> exactly. Maybe well, what you got from mum and dad. It's fantastic, isn't it? What I should do is finish this video like I do with all the people that I do auctions for. So, Go on. Thanks, Margie. <laughs> <laughs>